You know, not everything's life and death. Sometimes it's just fun. And there's plenty of romantic fun to be had, not only in Angel's Fall, the TV movie based on the novel by Nora Roberts, but in all of her books. Love matters most. It's the most powerful emotion that we have. And I like writing books that celebrate that between two really interesting, strong people. Interesting and strong. A description that fits Nora Roberts herself. Thank you for writing so many books. They have taken me out of my life many times when I needed that, so thank you. She's one of the top-selling authors in the world, with more than 400 million books in print. I'll get it home, don't worry about that. <laughs> and legions of devoted fans who can't seem to get enough of her independent heroines. They always seem to have a interesting career, they can take care of themselves. In fact, Roberts is credited with being one of the first romance writers to steer away from young, helpless, and hapless women. Yeah, an orphan virgin raised by an aunt, and it is, who is the secretary of the hero, who's the richest man in the free world, which can be a really fun story. What's wrong with that? But you don't want to tell that every time. And she doesn't just write pure romance. In 1995, she created a science fiction detective series using the pseudonym J.D. Robb to make it clear that this is a departure from her usual fare. I had had this idea for the main character of, of E. Dallas, a homicide lieutenant in the near future with a very dark past, a very difficult woman. But no matter what name she's writing under, her heroes and heroines are bound to be fabulous looking. Why do I want to write about ugly people? You know, it's, it's my book. They can all be pretty. I think we have to say this. You write great sex scenes. Oh, I hope so. Whereas well, again, if you're writing a relationship book and you don't write a good sex scene, then it's kind of disappointing, isn't it? You want these characters to have fabulous sex. And, and um, either very romantic sex or fun sex or hot sex. <laughs> Do people always ask you if these experiences come from your own Oh, yeah, life? <laughs> all the time. And I say, oh, yeah, I have, I've had all that great sex of, with many, many different men, and I've solved crimes, I've committed them. <laughs> uh, you know, I've traveled in space, I've, you know, climbed mountains, done it all. She's done it all, all the writing, that is, from her home in rural Maryland, where she's lived since 1972. It's my place, and, and I recognized it immediately when there was nothing here, that this is where I want to be, it's where I want to raise my children. She was a young mom, marooned here during a snowstorm in 1979, when she decided to start writing. Two children, two boys, four days, and I thought, I'm, I'm going insane. Murder-suicide could happen here. <laughs> that's, how, that's how far gone I was. And I said, I'm, I'm going to write one of these stories down that it's always playing around in my head, just for fun, just for something to do, for sanity. And the minute I started, that was it, and in a, in a notebook with, with a pencil. But publishers were not immediately impressed. They rejected you. They rejected me many times. <laughs> but you, you still kept at it. Oh, yeah, I wanted it. I wanted it really, really bad. Her first novel was published in 1981. And in just over three decades, she's turned out more than 200 books, many of them number one bestsellers. She says she spends six to eight hours a day working here in her home office. And we were surprised to learn, finds writing a struggle. I think people here, gosh, she's written 200 books. It must be so easy for no, her. So not. It's, it's just not. not. No, writing is never easy, and I don't think it should be. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. It's, you know, like baseball, you know. You've really got a shop full of I've them, I've got huh? plenty of them. The work has won her 19 Romance Writers of America awards, and reportedly a whopping $60 million a year. So if you're wondering what she could possibly spend it all on... And I would see this building just falling apart. It just really broke my heart and I kept thinking I, I could save that building. The building is an inn built in the 1790s 
in the town of Boonesboro, Maryland, just a few miles from her home. It is now up and running after a multi-million dollar renovation. The building itself had changed and deteriorated over the years, but there were features in here that were extremely important for us to respect, like the, the, uh, the archways. The archways are great. Roberts personally designed each of the inn's guest rooms in honor of a famous couple in literature. There's one dedicated to Elizabeth and Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. So it's got a little Regency flavor. Jane and Rochester from Jane Eyre. And even Eve and Rourke from her science fiction series. If I can't name a room after my own characters in my own inn, who can? So this uh, is much this more is contemporary really or a little bit futuristic <laughs> with touches like the Louis XVI ghost chairs, ghost yes. chairs and the, the pop of orange and the antique looking dresser. Roberts used the renovation of the inn as the backdrop for a fictional trilogy about Boonesboro. And the town is something of a family preoccupation. Her son owns the local pizza joint and her second husband, Bruce Wilder, owns the bookstore. What's fun about being married to Nora Roberts? Oh, it's all good, you know. <laughs> well, she's a fun person to be around, and she's very creative, and um, I love her. Loves her so much, he's got a whole section devoted to his wife's amazing career. So welcome to Nora World. That's right. <laughs> this is... Uh... This is Nora World. I think they have every book that's in print is in this room. In I, all 200 of them, huh? Yeah, they're, uh, they're here. In you fact, her own things. story you, you seems the like the stuff of a that. Nora Roberts novel. Right. So kind of like one of your heroines, you've had a happily ever afterlife. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. But at age 61, don't expect her to ride off into the sunset any time soon. Why? What makes you work What so would hard? I do with all those stories? They'd be crowding in my head, driving me crazy, let me out of there. What would I do with my day? And so, get to work.